Sorry for the voice, it's allergy season. At work, I looked at problems differently than colleagues. I'm just wired that way, although I had a good track record. Back in August 2020, I posted my views looking into the head gasket issue. It included some preliminary data and a comparison between the 6.0 and 6.4 heads, and I removed all that. It needed better explanation and I can sometimes make things complicated. I'm sorry this video has taken this long for people that are interested. Currently we have what seems like the ultimate solution, O-ringed heads, and I could just leave the subject alone and not put this out there. I always need to understand why things go wrong, which means down the rabbit hole. This isn't a brief video. A lot of explanation is needed. I'm a research guy. There is never an absolute, and without the test data I used to generate, maybe this is a theoretical video. The typical street failure I've seen with the 6.0 blown head gaskets is right down the center of the head. There are so many of these images posted in the different forms. It's where many head gaskets fail on other engines, as it is the weak point. The location has the lowest clamping pressure, a narrow gasket area, and the most fragile part of the gasket. When the gasket moves in this area, it abrades the sealant away. I think we have more of a head design problem than a bolting issue, complicated by the insistence to not machine the heads. From the start, owners of the 6.0 have called out the design was missing two bolts per cylinder. It makes sense. The competitors had six bolts. The earlier design 7.3 had six bolts. What were these guys thinking? More bolts will provide a higher clamping force, especially when they are the same diameter. But is it a clamping force issue? More locations will also reduce the distance between the bolts. The dogma for the 6.0 became these heads are lifting due to the bolts. So stronger bolts to increase the clamping force. And we see this dogma over and over, this tunnel vision. The reliance on studs using the incorrect term bulletproofed. Good luck with that. We knew years ago that studs did not solve the issue. We just never got past it. And I can't find anyone who has looked into the clamping loads with this head, or the bolts or studs tension values. When I started working on this motor, I looked at this thread started by Charlie of Casey Turbos. It's easy to look back years and see missteps. You're not in the moment. This is almost a decade of people experiencing blown head gaskets before O-rings became the solution. They are the same stories most of us know already. The thread starts with a flawed assumption at the time. Studs and OE gaskets are everything right. It's not that simple. You could bypass my going through this, but I think I need to do it to illustrate the problem. He requests to include fasteners, miles, any headwork, watt tune, how much horsepower. All these people are running tunes of some type. In my R&D world, it's how we tested products under accelerated testing. Worst case. You could pause the video or go to the site to read the different comments. It's a good thread to read. It shows the original failure is with stock head bolts, while following Ford's instructions to not machine the heads. Most are using OE gaskets, some use stock bolts, some use ARP studs, and they fail again. I was going to block out the names, but you would just see those when visiting the site. These types of threads are on many forums. This is not a slight to ps.org or to any of the posters. Also remember, it's the learning curve from eight years ago. Number two has gasket failure at 125K, then used ARP studs, OE gaskets, not machined, 
blown after another 20k. The flatness across the width is not known. Gaskets are blown again in 20k miles while running Hypertech. The second round heads are milled with three and six thousandths taken off the heads. Now running a different tune and good so far at 100k. So machining and the new tune helped. Number three knows a guy but doesn't have many details. Blown gaskets, ARP studs, OE gaskets, all done at a Ford dealer. Ford doing it means they lightly clean the surface, checked for flatness under two thousandths, and definitely no machining. They blew again in 25K. He asks if we should be tightening to a higher force because of only four bolts. And not going to help. Number four has no clear admittance of tunes. Blew at 68K during a light but high speed tow. He is unsure the heads were machined as he was told. ARP and OE gaskets. Gaskets are blown again while towing with tunes after the typical 20K. A theme is forming. 20K to 25K after a rebuild. Number 5 blew the stock gaskets, but with ARP and OE gaskets, had been okay in 2014 with a tune. The brother-in-law blew the stock engine with Hypertech. Ford dealer installed OE head gaskets and ARP, so I would say the Ford version of cleaning, no milling. They blew again. Number 6 at 50K had studs and OE gaskets done at a Ford dealer with the typical dealer cleaning and no machining. No idea about head flatness. After 43K, starting to see a coolant pressure under loads. I'll repeat, no machining. Reusing the studs, OE gaskets, but this time the heads are milled eight thousandths of an inch. He tows with a Looney Tune. Later he comments about the earlier work failed in 10K with head cracks, but then he got UFC O-ringed heads. He's also using higher rated studs. He changed the tuning as well. The eight thousandths removed from the earlier heads is more than I would chance. I'll bring this in from another thread. Stock engine blown at 40K with a tune and towing. He went to ARP, over tightening them to 250 foot pounds, but no machining to flatten the heads. Blew after 20K. He was ripping down the highway with an extreme race tune, twisted the heads. 250 foot pounds of torque didn't help. New virgin OE heads. OE gaskets, reuse the overtorque studs, and still using the extreme race tune. Blown after 27K. Remember the new virgin heads. Another attempt using new ARP studs and OE gaskets. He prepped the almost new heads that had 27K on them with a block and 220 grit paper. Similar to what I've done with the lapping. Use the ARP recommended torque for these new studs. Later retorque the studs, finding some had relaxed. 19k miles and holding with bigger injectors and turbo. I'll talk about retightening later, maybe in a fasteners video. Returning to the original thread. Number 11's head gaskets failed after 100k. No milling. And the two to three thousandths deviation may be either width or length. Ford dealer grade cleaning, ARP studs torqued in five steps with the new Ford tightening pattern. So Ford and Navistar were looking at the consistency of the clamping load, trying to address the head gasket issue, and they found a weakness. Tuned and turbo upgrades holding at 30k but he moved on to another 6.0 as reported in another thread. Number 16 blew twice, maybe machined since the heads were thinner than Ford warns about. Number 27 failed after 100k, heads machined 3 thousandths, ARP installed, black diamond gaskets, and failed after 43k with a tune. He says everything was done right, but I'm not sure about the black diamond gaskets. They're not OE. From another thread, first the tuning history. 
the gaskets blew at 21K. Ford did the work, so cleaning, stock head bolts, stock gasket. Blown in 30K. For this second repair, the dealer installed ARP studs, Ford cleaning, stock gaskets, and no machining. The head gaskets blew after 78K with the ARP studs. And now he's thinking about O-ringed heads. Please remember the heads were never machined. Note the comment from an experienced diesel service manager. And his second comment. The theme continues 20K to 25K normally after a rebuild the failure returns. So using ARP studs did not solve the issue, including when they were torqued higher than ARP instructs. Higher may be an issue for the gaskets. My take from all of this, it was a mistake by Ford to not allow machining the heads carefully. This is also what is frustrating. With all these stories of head gasket failure, there is no reliable data about head flatness across the width. It's overlooked, or you don't know if the machinists are reporting the length or width deviation. Typically, they report the length. There's a lot more to these people's stories of what they have run and done to the engine. I'm grabbing a theme that introduces my thoughts. We also have stock non-tuned vehicles that have made it to 200K, 300K, and more. They are out there. They're just not vocal. They have nothing to complain about. There is another issue that occurs that should be noted. If the EGR cooler fails, leaking coolant into the intake manifold, head gasket failure may trail 20K to 40K miles later. Steam really kicks up the pressure. There's no real easy answer here. Some people have good luck with mild tuning with a factory build. Two years into this thread is an interesting exchange. If the ARP studs are the correct clamp force, why are there repeat failures? And what if milled heads and ARP studs are combined? In the 6.0 situation, flatness and width is vital. And prepping both the block and head surfaces has to be good, maybe exceptional. Lengthwise, even dead flat from the factory is not going to happen. They are stress warped. And that can vary when you take them out of the box. Some have a little, some have more. Some have none. But flatness across the width is a work in progress. And you'll see why I say that. Charlie mentions some owners who are making higher power without failing. He doesn't mention if those 550 horsepower trucks are the, quote, commonized engines. This person says the 20 millimeter heads are an improvement and leaves some clues. I'll get back to my view of him later. Charlie made a comment regarding Felpro gaskets, and the timing is before O-ringed heads had proven themselves. It got me to open an old back channel into Felpro and talk about the gaskets and surface finish. That channel is now closed. I wish I'd talked to him more about other things at the time. I agree with this assessment, but it depends on your intentions, stock, or what tunes. There's another good report about Felpro after a short duration. And more. 17K, 35K, 40K with a tune, 15K with a tune. Here's another forum story about a failed repair. So I asked about his prep since I had lapped my heads. He indicated the flatness although I would have went down to five ten thousandths feeler gauge steps. First, he used a cookie to clean, and I wouldn't do that. But then he lapped the heads using a whetstone. He over-torqued the studs, believing an under-torque kept the one spot in the center of the heads from contacting. I don't think under-torque was the reason for non-contact in the center. 
that's tenting, which reduced the clamping pressure. And using the cookies may have caused a little shallowing. Thor's hammer did report of the life afterward. There is a reason higher clamping force can address some situations. Hartwig in Germany made a good observation on a set of heads he was working on. I didn't check this with my heads, as mine did not exhibit a visible depression. There was a depression in the head, from the head gaskets. Hartwig has a good channel. He's inquisitive, inventive, and detail-oriented. Using ARP stud tension values from their website, I calculated the unit pressure on the gasket fire rings surrounding the cylinders in pounds per square inch. Ductile iron has a yield value that would allow imprinting into the surface with partial contact loading. With an irregular surface, such as using a cookie to clean or with a tented or crowned head, the clamping pressure will be localized to the first contacting areas. These areas will have a higher unit pressure until the contact spreads out. While I don't believe in over-torquing, bedding the fire rings into the head and deck would correct for waviness. And the ARP studs can handle higher tension. I'll show why later on. A good flat head with a good surface finish is a better solution than higher tensioning, in my opinion. This story is what got me to change from using my lapping plate to lightly clean or correct a surface finish to take it to another level on these 6.0 heads. I usually don't do this. And it got me to take a look from 30,000 feet at what is happening here. I don't have the samples or tools to prove it. So it's just an unconventional view, a theory. It is a dangerous road I travel. Distance has a tremendous influence on deflection or distortion, beams, joists, heads. An iron worker, carpenter, framer, tile worker all deals with deflection. This simple I-beam calculator is set up for a 10-foot distance between the supports, loaded in the center. The deflection starts out under one half inch. Doubling the support distance to 20 feet, the deflection is now three and a half inches. Tripling the distance, the deflection is almost 12 inches. As you widen the spacing, there is more deflection for the same load. The increase is logarithmic. Pressing down on the anchor points with more force, more restraint, by over-torquing the studs does not alter deflection across the distance. Reducing the distance between the supports reduces deflection. Increasing the thickness reduces deflection. Or adding ribs for support reduces deflection. And here's where I think the 6O's problem is. As I've shown before, this was a revealing image when I was lapping my heads. The initial coarse abrasive develops deep scratches. Finer grits abrade the peaks. If there are shallows, the lower areas are not abraded. The higher areas change reflection. It's not unlike block sanding to find and correct the low spots during bodywork. So there are low spots in my heads, visually and measured. The contrast gave me a good way to tell when I had good flatness without checking gaps with a straight edge, taking down the high spots to match the lows. So why am I the only nut in the tree seeing this? I'm also the only nut in the tree lapping the heads to the extent I did. If I was going to mill these heads, the typical setup would be to indicate off these four points to true the head. The issue we have with our heads is they cup from residual casting tension, even brand new heads out of the Ford box. If we fly cut in one thousandths of an inch intervals, each step shows the pattern like this because of the slope, the cupping. 
If the head was flat from the start, a one thousandth of an inch cut would transition like this. But anyone fly cutting this cupped head never sees this. At this point, I've removed less than five ten thousandths of an inch. Doing small areas at a time follows the cupping. It may be flat across the width, but it's not down the length. Ford says length deviation is not an issue, as long as it's under four thousandths of an inch. I'll show this later on, probably in another video. Since posting my video of lapping heads, a few other people who tried it reported they had the same condition. The combustion areas are shallow. Thank you for confirming this. I really appreciate feedback on this and all my other videos. Unless you're off your meds. I don't have mass quantities of heads to confirm how much the distortion varies. There are several ways this can be occurring. Internal stress from the manufacturing process as what we have down the length. It could be a thermal distortion issue. Or we could have plastic deformation, which at this time is what I'm leaning towards. But it can be any of these, or all of these. My engine always had stock 2003 programming, which is a little more aggressive, yet we see tenting down the center at 75,000 miles with these 20 millimeter heads. Depending on the cause, it could be stopping here or continuing for a longer time. We do see stock engines going for 250k without head gaskets failing, even the 18 millimeter heads. But I think what we have here is plastic deformation. You can be in a material's elastic range and it will return to its original dimension. But when we go past the yield point, the material does not return to its original shape. When bending or distorting something, there is springback. Bending this tube shows springback when the pressure is released. Around the head bolts, these areas are the high spots across the width, measured and visual. The areas where the cylinder bores are, are shallow, the combustion areas. Right down the center of the head is the lowest point. These heads are tented, or crowned if you want to use that term. There are other heads that have tented like this, but this is a diesel with high combustion pressures and requires a much better seal. It's not as forgiving. And I believe the combustion areas are pulling the gasket sealing areas along with them. Where the head bolts are, are the high points across the width. From the world of an engineer specializing in fastening, they see this area by the bolts as the pressure cone, the highest loading. Outside of this cone, our heads are moving from the combustion pressure. All heads do this to some extent. It's why we use MLS gaskets. This image represents the generic distribution of clamping pressure across any head. It's supported by discussions within SAE. The distribution of clamping force is a function of head stiffness. You could have 100, 90, 80, or any percentage of the bolt's clamping load at the center of the head. I'll emphasize it again. The distribution of clamping force is a function of head stiffness. In the past, when I've said it's not the bolts, people point out that the 6.4 doesn't have as bad a problem with blown head gaskets. There still are some. The head bolts are larger in diameter and shorter in length. Shorter, they are longer in the stretch zone. But no one looks past the bolts. These are the 6.0 and 6.4 heads together. There is a bridge from the intake port side adding to reinforcement. Rather than the scalloped reinforcement between the head bolt columns, full height ribs link those columns to the bridge.
More importantly, there are stiffening ribs from the head bolt columns that extend across the combustion area surrounding the injector bore. The 6-4 head was designed to hold the combustion area for moving upward from the combustion pressure, from tenting. So is this lessons learned from the 6-0? I think so. This should be obvious for anyone working on both the 6-0 and 6-4 heads. And there is support for these heads flexing too much. I see those changes in the head design as more important than the head bolt change from 14 to 16 millimeter. During the development of the engine, the clamping pressure between the bolts should have been accounted for. And it probably was. For the original design. Remember, the scuttlebutt was at Ford S. Navistar for more horsepower just as the 6.0 was being introduced. With a lower horsepower, the VT365 engines do not seem to have the head gasket failure rate of our pickups. Something was being altered with the change to the 20mm heads. It wasn't just commonized for the assembly line. I thought there may be variations in the head's bed plate casting, as I alluded to in another video. So maybe with the 20mm we have a thicker bed plate. When I was looking for data to confirm my theory, I came across this from Keith Browning's DTS Industry Only site. From this person's history here and on TDS, I believe he is within Navistar or International. I call them both. Revisiting his post I showed earlier, the discussion is about 6.4 liter improvements. For the 6.4, gaskets, bolts, and stiffening both the head and crankcase for the higher combustion pressures were done. He also mentions the head gasket warranty with the 6O during the change to the 20mm heads. From the same site, another interesting exchange in 2011. A post by Mike Chand, who we know from Diesel Forums as a Ford tech. The typical statement of head lifting due to 10 bolts, suggesting to modify the 6.0 block for larger bolts. A response from my presumed Navistar insider, the casting is too weak to do that, and brings up the other changes used with the 6.4. Then a Ford tech mentions his discussion within the Ford network, a response to a post he made about using head studs. Taking a Ford engineer's call, Ford looked at offering a kit with new gasket and studs. But they saw as many failures with studs as with head bolts. And that the block may be a weak point, flexing. So the block may also be limiting to what we can achieve. The commonized blocks may have reinforcement as well, like the 6-4, to keep the head bolts or studs from flexing upward from the lower block area, where the threads are for the bolts or studs. I can't check that. I have no data to back that up. I always look at information with some skepticism. But block flexing would be a reason why higher torqued ARP 2000 studs or higher tensioning studs do not do as much as we think they should. We would have to see if people with failed gaskets had higher torque studs and found that the release tension was less than the tightening tension. There is a proper way to do that. But the slant of the story was three points of weakness. Out of those, I know I can work on gaskets and head flatness. I'm hoping the Felpro gasket has an improvement for that part of the solution. And it may be tunnel vision from me, but I still see leading more of a head issue. My block was flat. My head was not. And they were trying to fix something with the 20mm heads. During a rebuild for the street, I think the 20mm heads are a better choice than the 18mm if you need new heads and you can't afford going to O-rings, or you already have good 20mm heads. 
I think a better solution was incorporated into the 6-4 design, and I wish that was incorporated into the 6-0 heads. And from this lawsuit information, we know some within Fords were freaking about the engine durability. If you have a problem with flexibility across the heads, combining the lower clamping pressure between the head bolts with pre-existing tented or crowned heads, the gaskets would be more prone to fail. And I believe this is why we see heads that are just cleaned refail in short order, especially with tunes. The heads are not milled. So we may not be gaining as much with studs as we think based on the pressure distribution, especially with reusing tented or crowned heads, and within possible block limitations. Those higher strength fasteners do have their place, but I think the main problem was misjudged early on. Well, at least my opinion. I should have included this in my gaskets video. I can't show the SAE papers, but from published service literature. With multiple layer steel head gaskets, any gap is secured by the sealant and the design of the gasket itself. All heads have some bending due to the peak combustion pressure, lifting if you want to call it that. But I came across this within the SAE papers and this article. The gasket layers have flexibility built into them. This story calls the stopper ring what I call the fire ring. And it mentions a bead acting as the secondary sealing member. I've been told it supports the fire ring from moving, while this story indicates secondary sealing. Can be both. And Felpro's accordion folds would also be part of this gap-filling spring action. But its ability can be compromised if it's crushed too much. The collapse of the gasket's ability to take up head gaps would be due to clamping pressure exceeding the design. And that brings up a different aspect about O-rings from my conversations years ago. Along with the O-ring keeping the fire ring or stopper ring from moving sideways, an O-ring can also keep the gasket from being overly compressed, similar to what is done on valve cover transmission pan gaskets, controlled compression from over torque. I'll add a few more sections of the articles if you want to stop and read, but without my narration. Back on track with the stock design and flexing. If the heads flex too much and develop a wide gap under the high pressure, the head's higher center becomes the blow-off valve at peak combustion pressures. Then the gasket moves side to side and the sealant abrades away at the rougher block and head surfaces. Remember I measured an 8RA in between the head gasket layers. When I lapped my block decks, I didn't see any shadowing that would indicate low spots on the deck. The rebuilder milled them poorly, but the block deck was essentially flat. My heads were not. Let me go back to this slide and present this as deformation from the force. I'm going semi-technical to prove my point in two steps. The classic stress-strain curve of many materials, as long as they are not brittle. There is bending or stretching. As long as the material strain is below the material's yield point, it will always recover to its original dimension. Anywhere within this box is elastic. It will return to a flat condition after the load is removed. In our case, lower power. If the strain or pressure goes past the yield point, there will be plastic deformation. The distortion remains. This is what we see when we measure heads and find they are not flat. But what we measure is after spring back. It may have moved more than we see. Again, my heads, heads that never experienced any tuning, I always ran stock 2003 programming. I still had tenting with my 20mm heads, but the gaskets didn't fail. 
I'm going to repeat this again with a different view. I've been known to drive a point home. The situation of a head gasket is so complex. This is the simplest explanation, and I'm taking liberties. For this example, rather than my 75 thousandths of an inch, I'm going to round to one thousandths. If the heads were more resistant to this movement, there still would be a stress strain yield curve. But the movement would be small, less of a gap. The head is flexing from the peak combustion pressures, depending on the power we ask for with the throttle. The movement is in the elastic range, like most heads. The MLS head gaskets have an elastic layer and sealant. Life will be good, and the head returns to a flat condition with no or low power, lower throttle. Keep in mind, the gasket still has to resist any side-to-side -side movement during this phase to not scrub the sealant away over time. If the head surface is too rough, it abrades faster. This is why MLS gaskets require a smoother finish than other types of gaskets. There is movement. You don't want the sealant to abrade to tear itself up from the flexing. If you remember the gaskets I disassembled, the sealant inside the gasket that faced the 8RA surface was very much intact. The sealant facing the head and block decks was not as good. Better on the head side, which had the better surface finish. When we have forced the heads to flex past the material's yield value, we have permanent distortion. The head now has a higher yield value by straining the material past the original yield point. At this point, it's strained hardened or work hardened. The same process that is used to make some bolts stronger, stretching, including some products made by ARP. The elastic window has expanded, but the elasticity starts with the tented or distorted head. It's no longer flat. The slope or modulus of elasticity hasn't changed. It will still deflect the same with a given force. The only difference is it will take more force to permanently distort to a larger gap. But under load, you now have plastic deformation as well as elastic deformation. From the head gasket viewpoint, the head surface has a gap of one thousandths of an inch, plus any other elastic movement from the peak combustion pressure. This is what I didn't explain well in the forum posts. The sealant is already being stressed. At a moderate load, the gap might be 1.6 thousandths of an inch. If you step on the throttle and engage full power, thinking of tuning right now, the gap may be two thousandths of an inch or more. If we disassemble the engine and measure the heads, we would only see one thousandths of an inch distortion. What if the dealership tech sees something under two thousandths? To Ford Motor Company, that is good to go. Slap that puppy back together, give it back to the owner. This is why I think it was a poor decision from Navistar and Ford to allow for as much of a deviation from flat as they did. As I said before, the no machining comment may be a worry about casting variations, making the bed plate too thin. But this was their decision. It certainly wasn't because a good machinist doesn't know how to generate a smooth surface finish, achieve the proper RA, something they said they were worried about. You can teach a five-year-old how to use a profilometer to check the surface finish. If we have an out-of-flat condition, and it goes back out running the same conditions at wide open throttle, it will be double the gap of what the tech saw when inspecting the heads. And if it's close to two thousandths, under high load, it will be a four thousandths gap. How long do you think the sealant on the gasket lasts before it is scrubbed and burned away? 20,000 miles? 25,000 miles? Remember the trend from the forum comments.
I think this is the 6-0 fault. Me, I want those heads flat. During a rebuild, I don't want a distorted surface that is maybe tenting even more. Now we have a seasoned head. It's actually better than a new casting. It just needs some work as long as it's not badly cracked. I prefer a flat surface that is work hardened for a higher yield value. The head gets milled and the distortion is removed, or in my case, abraded away. A good machinist will minimize the material removed. The most will come off the ends and exhaust side due to the cupping. The head would still be flexing, but it won't be both elastic and plastic deformation spacing between the head and the block, just elastic spacing. And the worst case would only be under very high load and much less otherwise. But it won't be a distorted surface to start with, to add to the gap. This is the familiar story we hear and what started me thinking these heads are flexing. If the gasket was just blown, you could not power down and suspend the coolant puking issue. The gap exceeds the gasket's ability. The coolant pressurization is suspended until at least the sealant has scuffed or fretted away. As I just said, using a mill to get the entire surface flat may be acceptable if a minimum is taken off. Abrading under one thousandths while doing my small surface lapping and not worrying about the cupping down the length may be better. I hope so. I removed under one thousandths of an inch the intent to keep as much bed plate material as possible. Coming back to the Felpro gasket. They say they spent a lot of time developing their gasket for the 6-0. A thicker sealant. A layer to fill existing gaps, the accordion fold. A thicker fire or stopper ring. A backup bead to hold the fire ring in place, like an O-ring. I doubt that it is as good as an O-ring, since the O-ring is embedded into the head, providing a strong foundation, but I'll take whatever this gasket provides. What I showed was based on what I had with my 20 millimeter heads. If those have a thicker bed plate, as I believe they do, movement can be larger with any of the other versions of heads Navistar supplied as the 18 millimeter heads for the 6.0. As a community, the only way to know is if people took the time to measure the heads off the engine, noting the flatness. Back to the story and my point the suit against Ford that had been in the news. The interesting part was a Ford warranty manager saying the cylinder pressure exceeds Ford's design parameters, high enough not to deny warranty with any aftermarket equipment. Well, it's a Navistar motor, not Ford. Was this an overreaction? Unfortunately, you don't get to see what Ford's legal team would bring with redirect for that statement they will throw an employee under the bus. He was brought into the program because of the warranty load. Did he come from the gas engine side? Those combustion pressures are much lower, under 100 bar. I looked for him on LinkedIn to see his background. He is nowhere to be found. And the statement doesn't say what may fail. The gaskets, the bolts, the pistons, the heads, or was the problem head flexing? Let's see how the voice does today. You can't believe how many times I've redone this video and the narration. I owe a thank you to Toreador Diesel on FTE. I asked him for the information and didn't know he had a lot going on, but he followed through. Thank you very much, TD. I really appreciate the effort. It's probably a good time to show the 6 liter had the highest compression ratio of the Power Stroke series. From engineering studies, the compression ratio impacts peak combustion pressures, as does advanced timing. Earlier I showed what I calculated as the unit loading on the gasket fire rings. 
over 16 tons per square inch pushes down on the gasket's rings to seal the combustion pressure. It's hard to understand how gaskets would be moving sideways and fretting the sealant if they had equal full pressure across this seal, but they don't, especially if the heads are tenting in the center. The unit loading is based on ARP's tension information for the 6O studs at the 210 foot-pound torque value. Each stud has a clamping force of 27,000 pounds. So the four ARP studs surrounding each cylinder have a total clamping force of 108,000 pounds more than four times the stock peak combustion pressure of 25,000, they are resisting. Every design has a safety factor. High pressure tanks and piping use 3.5 to 4.0. Automobiles range from 1.5 to 3.0 for the most critical. Aircraft and spacecraft use 1.2 to 3.0, the lower value due to weight concessions and why they have a lot of inspections. It depends on the application and materials, as well as the static or dynamic loading. For loading that is fluctuating or cyclical, it is vital to consider metal fatigue. A cyclical load below a metal's yield strength can cause failure if it's repeated enough. That's why we have long head bolts. Fatigue has happened with head bolts on a few engines, with short head bolts and especially aluminum heads. The heads are clamped down over 270,000 pounds, yet the heads did not seal the 6O gaskets, based on the repeat failures we know of. I have no actual information on what the various tunes generate for maximum peak pressures. So I swagged, which may just be for some milder tunes based on some engineers talking about pressures for the modern, high-output production diesel. It's also been said that the 6.7 power stroke runs in the 2,600 psi range. 3,000 psi would make the peak combustion pressure on these heads 33,120 pounds. Back to the clamping forces. The yield values for the 14 mm 10.9 and 12.9 bolts come from several industry sources. I didn't want to make an error doing my own calculations based on the minor diameter of the bolts. I'm showing Fastenel's data as well. But these values are for standard bolts, not specialized bolts with rolled threads like the head bolts we have. I would need an Instron to have a direct value, so I'll stay with these lower values. But just keep that in mind. It's the lower end. According to ARP, the stress-strain curve, or modulus of elasticity, is the same for all these alloys. There are slight variations, mostly at the lower end, but it's close enough. In discussions of using torque to yield fasteners, the yielding target is past the yield point towards ultimate tensile strength in the plastic region, one-third to one-half the way to ultimate. And there's a good reason for doing this. You have less clamping variation in the flatter section, better consistency from compounding errors. But any angular tightening, whether it's yielding fasteners or not, doesn't have to be TTY, has less bolt-to-bolt -bolt scatter than from the frictional variations of using torque as the control, ARP lube included. Bill McKnight, the technical director for Molly Aftermarket, wrote that all head bolts are 10.9. Another point I disagree with. Any engine manufacturer could use any strength bolt, using standard grades or custom-designed alloys. ARP studs are custom design. So the elephant in the room. I searched and found ferry cap and screw made the 6.0 head bolts with a designation of 118R. So it's a custom design or custom alloy. It might be grade 11.8 or not. They were not receptive to my asking. 
me not being an international employee. But I'll include as if they were 11.8. It would make a lot of sense. The first numeration is the ultimate tensile strength. The second numeration, after the period, is the percentage of ultimate, which is the yield strength, or yield point. So when you put in these values for 14 millimeter bolts of these grades and tighten them into the TTY range, the situation gets interesting. Not so much different than the bolt load of the ARP studs. Remember, I'm using standard bolt values, not rolled thread stock. The ARP torque value is at the bolting load, not yielding. That's why you can reuse them if you didn't machine the heads. And all of those values are at multiples of the stock peak combustion pressure. Another way of saying it, the peak combustion pressures are far under the clamping load. Automotive engineering literature says the safety factor for head fasteners should be 3.0. We achieve a safety factor between 3 and 4 with the ARP studs, and close to that with the bolts. And the gaskets still failed. So I'm having a hard time understanding that we have a bolting issue. Let me do this as a graphic view. I'm not a table guy. The stress or tension values on the y-axis are for the total of four fasteners surrounding one cylinder, bolts or studs. First the ARP 2000 studs, now the 10.9 grade bolts and the 12.9 grade bolts. I'm adding the 11.8 fasteners in case I'm swagging correctly about our head bolts. As I said, the 0.8 rating means the yield is 80% of the ultimate tensile strength. So the curve is different. It starts to yield earlier. The circles represent the yield points, the X, the ultimate tensile strength. I'm ignoring the fracture points. They're irrelevant. This is the tension of the ARP 2000 studs. The 210 foot-pound torque value is at the bolting load, and it's within the elastic range. You can stress or elongate them more and still be within the elastic range, achieving a higher clamping force. People have done this. You could even tension them into the TTY condition, but then you could not reuse them, and they would have less ductility. They would be more prone to fracture. I'll add in the range for the TTY values. I use the one-third value for the table. Within a mid-range, the 11.8 bolt would be almost the same value for the ARP studs. And I use the conservative non-rolled thread values. I've added the peak combustion pressures. The inner circle is the range of the stock force. The outer circle, what I postulated for the range of tunes, and they may just be the mild tunes. Even if we factor in a 10% loss of tension due to relaxation, there's no reason for the bolts to start yielding with the pressures in this proportion. Yet the gaskets still failed. It ain't the fasteners. The high horsepower engines are in another world, one that I'm not trying to relate to. There's always something else with me. The graph doesn't show the bolts added stress from the thermal expansion of the head and block. While the bolts heat up as well, there is a delay in thermal ramp up since the bolts don't have direct contact down their entire length. It's why with a diesel you should wait for warm up before bashing the throttle. And why Ford, in the later programming, reduced power output until the engine was warm. People had noticed that after a reflash. Cold bolts with hot heads is the worst case condition because the bolts haven't had the opportunity to expand with heat. Thermal expansion will stress the factory head bolts since they are in the plastic yield range. How much depends on what temperature the heads see. But the clamping force is very high. 
There are engineering studies that show when a material is in a constrained environment under clamping load, the expansion movement will be restrained or rather redirected sideways, the unrestrained direction. And it's common knowledge that heads do move sideways in expansion. It's one of the reasons for MLS gaskets. It really doesn't take an engineering study. When a bolt has broken off or stuck in a threaded hole, we heat it cherry red. It's constrained in the diameter. Expansion is directed down the unrestrained length. And when cooled, it shrinks in diameter and is loose. The expansion and contraction depends on how hot the heads get. Based on normal operating temperatures and being in a constrained condition, the bolts do not see very much thermal stretching. But with the head bolts in the yielded state, you will lose some of the bolt tension from the expansion that does happen. They are in the plastic deformation range. Thermal expansion will elastically stretch the studs, but since they are at the 80% bolting load in the elastic range, there is no consequence. But this thermal issue is part of why head bolts have a safety factor. It's part of the consideration. You will also lose a little tension from relaxation over time as well, with bolts and studs possibly up to 10%. This is why in some situations it's directed to retorque after initial thermal cycles or after a set time period, typically 24 hours, to make up for some of these losses. Even with a potential 10 to 18% loss, these values question if we have a head bolt issue, unless you're pushing a lot of power. And why I kept coming back to a head flexing and deformation issue. There is the potential for either the nut or stud to back rotate, or even both. There's supposed to be less friction with the ARP lubricant, and friction holds the bolts in place, not just the tension. And why I think it's important to mark the final tightened location of the nuts in relation to the studs as well as to the heads. So I think a rebuild needs to have flat heads to start with the best choice of gasket design for the head flexing issue that exists with all heads. I call it more flexing than lifting. Or if you want to get real technical, localized lifting in the center. If I were pushing with a strong tune, I would obviously use O-ring heads. I don't see how there is head lifting from the bolts, unless you're tuning for a lot of power or have a coolant failure. During the entire production of the 6.0, Navistar and Ford never changed the head bolts. The letters at the end of the part number are A, the first iteration, not B, not C. Early on, there were engineering studies that changed the head gasket design. There were engineering studies and the bolt torque pattern altered. Midway in production, there were engineering studies and they decided to cast a new head, the 20 millimeter head. The only head casting I would use, the only head Ford sells since 2006. There's a reason why they stopped production of the 18 millimeter heads. All of that costs time and money. And if the hearsay is true, they looked at studs, but those didn't help due to other compromises. When Ford was selling a full engine set of head bolts, the list price was about $100 to $120. Working for a supplier to Ford and Navistar, knowing their markups, they probably bought the set for about $30 per engine. If their studies showed head bolts were an issue, it most likely would have cost them an additional $5 to $10 per engine for higher strength bolts from ferry cap and screw. This manufacturer could have supplied whatever Navistar and Ford commissioned them to do. They could have supplied studs. It would have been much less than what it cost them to make a new head casting trying to reduce warranty costs. 
if the bolts were the problem. On the service side, they offer studs with remand engines because the customer wants it, with a high profit upcharge. What company wouldn't? Not that head bolts can't fail due to stretching. Bolt stretching and head lifting has a distinct pattern, from my experience. It's more localized towards the bolts due to the loss of tension. With any engine, gas or diesel, when a large volume of coolant is lost, the heads get very hot and stretch the head bolts by the hot exhaust ports due to the thermal expansion. That gasket failure is easy to see with four bolts per cylinder or with six bolts per cylinder. Doesn't care. The heads are expanding. The bolts are stretching. At cold restart, the heads lift due to lower bolt tension and the gasket failure is not in the center of the head. You can also have thermal distortion at the center of the head when this happens. Ford specifically asked to check for that during the flatness check. It's the first thing they want you to check. There's a lot of bulletproof failure out there using ARP studs and OE head gaskets with only cleaned heads. There's a reason why O-ringed heads fixed what ARP studs did not. Of course, O-ringed heads have been machined if they're reused. And I believe good judgment when milling or lapping the head surface can also be a solution, depending on what you're doing with the engine. Many of those failures in the forearm thread may have been avoided if they just machined the heads. There are stock running trucks that haven't failed. Studs will provide a more comfortable situation being in the elastic range. But the head bolts don't seem to be the main problem in my view. At least from the lack of oxygen from being down this deep in the rabbit hole. If you made it this far, thanks for watching.